Welcome to week 24 of my Trading of a Living Challenge, where the goal is to make over $1,000 every single week using $125,000 of capital. So we've completed month six, and you can see here we generated a total of four and a half thousand dollars. So if we look at all the previous months, this is the largest month so far, primarily driven by the two contracts of a short strangle that I did on Tesla, which we're looking to hopefully realize about 90 to 95 percent of that 1900. So we'll probably start off week 25 with a slightly lower number because I'll need to buy this back because I don't want to take it all the way to expiration, which I believe is next Friday. So what we're going to do in this video, we'll just quickly go through how we did for last week. And then I want to show you the charts because both my Tesla and meta positions are in trouble. And it's this type of reason why I wanted to create this series is to show you the way I'm getting into trouble. My thought process are how I adjust my thought process and all of that kind of good stuff. So make sure you like and subscribe. And if you are brand new, playlist is down below so you can go back and watch all the way back from week one. So in total, I made $771, which was the lowest amount for uh, month six therefore making us 25% or $250 behind target. Again, I'm pulling that back in time though. So again, overall for the whole month, I only spent two, just under two and a half hours compared to a day job of 160 hours. And again, I keep saying this because you've got all of this freedom to potentially do a part-time job, start your own business, start your own YouTube channel, whatever it is that you want to do to supplement and increase this income so obviously i missed the goal of four and a half thousand versus i'll tell me here wouldn't it i was actually up oh, my first thing's first month i was actually up actually so i was up by four hundred dollars for the month my first ever green had green month so i probably should have opened with that but yeah so all good there so i was up for there but most of the time as you can see i'm down by 200 i'm down by nearly a grand on that particular month so it is, it does fluctuate and supplementing your income with something probably a bit more predictable would work out there. Overall, how we're looking with 2.4K down, 10% brought in 22 and should have brought in 24.6. Again, if you ask me 24 weeks in that I'll only be 10% behind, I probably would have bitten your hand off, especially with the uh, type of account that I'm trading to get to 53 grand. So I don't really show this at the bottom, where this just shows you against the whole year to date. So obviously I'm 58% down, 31K behind, but we've still got 20 odd weeks to go till we complete. So let's get into the more exciting stuff around the trades. Tesla, as you guys know, I own 300 shares at 282.50. Tesla's been dropping. And I bought back the 132 call and I have to roll down again to the 114. So I am actually shooting this in week 25. And for those you can see on the top of the screen here, Tesla's trading at 118. So if we head over to the chart, we've got my assignment at 282.50, sold the 114 call. For the first time in a long time, I am now in the money on my call option. Not by a lot, only $4 in, so I should be able to roll this out pretty comfortably and if I wanted to go at the money I could probably get one and a half one and a half thousand my only concern at the moment is that today's Wednesday the 11th of week 25 tomorrow is CPI announcement and for me I want to roll this position before because I'm also in the money as well I need to see how Tesla plays that today and I will look to probably roll this at least to give myself some time here because I don't want to be in the challenge of earnings at the moment so that's the plan hopefully tesla drops slightly comes back to his pivot so he gapped up over his pivot it started to come down and that's why i did the 114 call because it was at the pivot level when i did it last week to get to the pivot and and potentially stay around that pivot level but it's jumped up but gapped up above its pivot so i think it should get back to its pivot if he gets back to the pivot today i'll look to roll a couple of strikes up at least before CPI. I, my personal view on CPI for what it's worth, I do think CPI again will continue to trend lower when it hit the target. I think they've revised it. So I watched me Ken's channel yesterday, said so they've revised it down to a negative 0.1%. 
But if it's anything around in meet expectations, again, you can expect the market to rally here. So that's the bit we just need to worry about here with, with Tesla. And that's the situation there. Meta, 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 meta. So what I did was I rolled this call out by another week at the same strike. It cost me $30 to roll. And if you look at Meta, it just continues to go up. It's, it's really annoying. And you can see here that it's now making eyes again. We're nearly at my assignment. Cheers, we're at 133. 133, my cost basis is at 133, 139, 50. I can potentially get out of this position, which should be great. But I'm holding this 97 call and I'm in the red here because I've got this 97 call and it just blew through my overall strike. It's this gap here that screwed me over and it never came back, never came back. This is a bit less challenging for me. This is what I wanted to happen is come back, fill this earnings gap, getting close to my 200 shares of my cost basis. My view here is I can potentially close out one contract for a 3K loss and then take a 3K hit on my P&L. But then I lose basically a whole grand of profit. And if it was a portfolio, I probably would have done that. But the fact we're not in a portfolio, we're using the income to pay for expenses. I don't have the luxury to do that. What I'll need to do or think about is if I roll these strikes up to the 100, which will probably cost me around $500 to do so, I have to fund it. I have to just bring in less money next month to get out of these positions, which is not ideal but it's what I have to do. And then just FYI, as always, I put the screenshot in so you guys can pause the video and check out the trades, but these tables are more, more visually on there. So that's Meta. I need to think about, because my Tesla position is also in the money. So I've got both my covered calls in the money, which I can manage, which is fine. But if we're looking to generate income to live off and pay expenses and stuff like that, this is not the right position. So one of the things that I've learned on this is if you are trying to trade for a living and you are attempting to do a wheel strategy, predominantly a covered call strategy, you really want to do it in the bull market. I'll tell you that for a fact. So <laughs> this is this is probably one of the best learnings that I've learned, which is why a nice segue of why I've gone into a more trading mindset around outside of the wheel strategy because selling puts is fine i think my approach of doing it weekly probably isn't the best method to be using when it comes to trading for a living but which is why i've sold a tesla strangle overall we sold the 157.50 and the 90. The tesla started to tank so then i rolled down the call side for 157.50 to 149. So total premium collected is 1,095 for the for the two contracts. Now I can buy each contract back for 50 cents or 50 dollars, as I saw it yesterday. So I could probably take up 996 dollars if I close this out. We have a look at this is doing. You can see here that we are nicely in our our strikes and Tesla has consolidated in that region, which is what you want for this strategy. You want Tesla to just meander inside this range, which is why I can close this out for pretty much a 90% gain, which is probably what I'll do because we still got a lot of time left on this trade. And what I'm thinking is, this is what I'm thinking, check this one out, is if I close this out, give back $100, recoup about 90% of the profit, I open another short strangle on Tesla which I use to finance, use all that money and to bring this up. I'm going to buy this back today because again, we've got CPI coming out tomorrow. I don't want uh, Tesla to do this or to do this based on the CPI outcome. So I want to close this out today. I'll wait for CPI to come out. Let that move play out. If it's to the downside, that's better. The volatility will start to go up. I will sell another short strangle. I will con and whatever profit I realize on that short strangle, because I'll have to buy it back at some point. I will use to move this covered call up. So I will manage and just continue to roll this position. If Meta does come down, if I can roll up the strike, I'll do that. But what I'll do is I'll use the money that I generate from my second short strangle to go and fund the movement up. And Tesla, I'll just continue to roll. We're at 114. As long as it's ended down yesterday, if it doesn't move that much today, I'll do a nice roll try get it to 118 119 strike i'll pick up less premium but i need to protect myself so now it's more about protection than bringing in income so i think week 25 to 28 month seven could be a lower premium month because i will be rolling up 
uh, Meta defending on Tesla and I'm using the, a short strangle strategy to cover my Meta position. So I think that's the play I'm going to make. Like, and I've got 2K inside the account, can't really do much with that. I was thinking of doing some puts on, on a riot or cryptocurrency. Everything has just jumped up so much. So just got to wait for CPI. Hopefully we get some down days. Funny enough, I want the market to go down to go make money, which is quite interesting. So I really hope you've enjoyed this uh, video and understand my logic and thought process. Like, subscribe, comment down below, and I should see you guys in the next video.